$96,000. What? Ninety six. It hasn't stopped. I haven't turned the playlist off. I've listened to every song at least three times. Help me. I'm addicted. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. In the Heights is on its way to theaters and on HBO Max in early June. We're going to talk about it today. No spoilers, of course. And I'm going to tell you, someone who has never seen this before, whether or not it is worth watching in the theater or on streaming. Let's do it. Here's the premise of In the Heights. It centers around a variety of characters living in the neighborhood of Washington Heights on the northern tip of Manhattan. At the center of the show is Usnavi, a bodega owner who looks after the aging Cuban lady next door, pines for the gorgeous girl working in the neighboring beauty salon, and dreams of winning the lottery and escaping to the shores of his native Dominican Republic. And those aren't all the characters. There are so many fantastically fleshed out characters in this film. Uh, but we're really focused on Anthony Ramos and his portrayal of Usnavi. So from what I've read, I'm trying to read into this musical, the, the Broadway show just a little bit, um, Lin-Manuel Miranda played that role and he's kind of passing the mantle to an incredible lead actor, someone who after seeing this film, I'm like, just give him all of the roles. And Anthony Ramos, he is so good in this film. Now, Lin-Manuel Miranda is also in this movie. He plays the Piragua guy. And if you know the Broadway show, then you know exactly what we're talking about. But this is a musical that really hones in on what I believe everyone wanted it to. And that is culture. That is uh, the way that almost every character in this film goes about life a bit differently because their ambitions and their goals are so focused. And while Usnavi is kind of like the heart of the film, we're always coming back to him, always um, reckoning with his ambitions. We're also dealing with a few other characters here that are fighting their own battles, from a Nina to a Vanessa. Well, heck, even Jimmy Smith's as Kevin. By the way, Jimmy Smith's in a musical. It's awesome. It's just really cool to see. But everyone is fighting their own battle that at the beginning of the film got me a bit nervous because I'm like, there are a lot of subplots and there are a lot of storylines how are you going to manage to wrap this up in a little over two hours? Somehow, they do it in not just an entertaining way, in not just a heartfelt way, but in a way that makes you want to get up and dance, that makes you want to get up and sing, and the musical numbers here... Now, I'll always say, well, I used to say, that there are a handful of things that a musical has to do to get me invested in its story. Because when you're breaking into song every five minutes, sometimes it's difficult to create a cohesive narrative. Now, if you're familiar with the Broadway musical, then you're aware that In the Heights is a very well-written story. But again... I had never seen that, so I was just hoping you can make it cohesive and allow it to come together. So you have to have that along with incredible, and I mean incredible music. And the music here, the way that it flows and weaves in and out of the story, the way that they will break into song and just kind of revert right back to everyday life. Um, it's funny when you think about it, but at the end of the day, In the Heights does it so well, and maybe even better than really any musical I've seen as of late, the way that they will just go into it and break out of it. And a lot of this rides on the shoulders of Lin-Manuel Miranda, who is absolutely incredible at his craft, at what he does, at writing these songs. But then you have John M. Chu, and you can't have a film like this work on the level that it does without a competent director. And Chu, who directed Crazy Rich Asians, has really honed in on his craft over the past couple of years, and he really delivers within the heights. I mean to the degree that I will not be shocked if this gets a Best Picture nomination. And that's not me saying that it's this you know, revolutionary story that we've never seen bits and pieces of before, but it's more so the complete package. It's more so all of these stories. Usnavi as this compelling lead character, but then you have Nina's father who spent all of his life savings on his daughter. She's coming back from college and uh, they butt heads a little bit because they're trying to decide what is best for them as a family, what is best for each other. And a lot of these acts that you see in this film, a lot of them are selfless. But everyone is so determined to live their dream while helping everyone else at the same time. That provides you with multiple opportunities for conflict. And there's definitely conflict in this film. And there are moments in this movie when our characters go through so much and they've just been beaten down at a point. It's almost like they're ready to give up. But there's always that moment or uh, that line of dialogue where someone will come in and 
pick our characters right back up. And I think that is such a beautiful thing. And that's the joy, or at least part of the joy, that you're going to get from watching In the Heights. It's not just the musical numbers. It's not just um, this crazy, awesome cinematography. But it's the compelling dialogue and the portrayals. And we cannot talk about performances here without bringing up, um, maybe other than our lead, uh, without bringing up Olga Meredith as Abuela. She is just, I mean, oh my goodness, I get chills just thinking about one particular moment she gets in the film, but her storyline is beautiful. She is the heart and soul of this movie. Honestly, I was listening to her speak at the beginning, and I'm like, that sounds like Anne Dowd from The Handmaid's Tale. It's not, but she also gets a musical number in there, and oh, we have to talk about the specific songs, and hey, which ones are my favorite? Well, her number uh, toward the end was beautiful. And then, of course, you have In the Heights, and you can't go wrong with that. But for me, it's, it's 96,000. That's the one that I was just jamming out to during the movie, after the movie, about five minutes ago. I can't stop listening to it. Everyone has their role, and everyone is really incredible. Melissa Barrera, Corey Hawkins, it's really impressive to watch everyone do what they do. But not just on its surface, it's when you think about what they had to do, you know, learning this choreography and figuring all of these things out, and then displaying it on screen. I mean, this really is just this awesome, huge project where everyone came together and had this creative input, and it worked. Now, when you're asking me what my, you know, issues were with the movie, maybe, I'll be flat honest with you, I, I don't have many. I could sit back and say it is somewhat of a cliche story, but the cultural representation uh, and just the characters themselves are so different, and it's such a different feel of a movie. Sure, similar story, but in that vein, it's different. Um, there were one or two moments where the characters are, you know, mouthing these musical numbers and the mouth is just slightly off from the actual voiceover that we're getting uh, you know sometimes I like when they're actually singing but I understand a movie like this you can't do that especially with some of these numbers and there are one or two characters that do tend to get overly dramatic at points in the movie uh, but again they have this tone that they stick to and then the set pieces is the final thing I want to talk about just the beautiful beautiful production design that will get nominated for an Oscar. No doubt in my mind, there's one number in particular where two of our characters are kind of um, scaling up and down the side of a building, and it was really, well, they're not actually doing it, but it was really cool, and I thought it was just kind of um, creative on the part of the filmmakers. This entire movie is just a creative showcase, a colorful explosion, and it's beautiful. In that way, it really is. So before I give you guys my score, thanks so much for watching my review for Army of the Dead, Spiral. So many movies, they're on this channel right now if you want to check those out. And drop your thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and if you're excited for In the Heights, which is absolutely wonderful. The musical numbers are incredibly choreographed and full of beautiful cinematography. Anthony Ramos is a star. Olga Merritt has blew me away with her emotional performance. It deserves to be seen on the biggest screen possible. I cannot believe. You know what? I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going at 88% for In the Heights. I haven't had an experience like this in the theater, right? If you watched on HBO Max, you're going to enjoy it. This is a film that I think could be the perfect one to bring everyone back to the theater and just have a wonderful time together. And I am just such a fan of Lin-Manuel Miranda, um, our director, our filmmakers, everyone involved. They did an incredible job. And this cast one of the best ensembles of the year, and it will probably stay that way until the end of the year. Uh, so in the heights, oh my goodness, I, I I may even love this more than others, but that's okay, man. You just, you have these experiences, and uh, it was really fun. My wife and I both enjoyed it very much. All right, guys, you're the best. Stay tuned. I'll see you soon.